Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guy. Today, I want to go ahead and uh, show you guys how to go about providing power for the uh, circuit that I showed you for uh, providing stay alive lighting for your passenger cars and your cabis or cabooses, however you want to say it. I want to ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box right here. And when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it and click all. That way you'll be notified every time that I upload a new video. So let's go ahead and get started now. Well, right up, I want to show you what kind of cars this circuit will fit in. Now, and that was one of the questions, and it was a good question that somebody asked uh, on Friday when I posted that video. So this is an Athern HO caboose, and you can see it's lit up inside here. Let me turn it around. You can see the light a little bit better, and I'll show you the difference here. I'll flip this up at an angle, and you can see that it's lit inside here. Uh, it shows better on the other side uh, with the uh, the film uh, with the windows there. And uh, just to show you what it's like without it, I've just disconnected the power, and it's powering down now uh, slowly. But that diffuser film does a really good job, though. Let me light it back up again here. And you can see it's lit back up. So this is the kind of installation that you can do. And in a second, I'll take this uh, the, the uh, caboose body off so you can see the modifications that I made and how I installed it. So let's go back now and go ahead and take a look at um, what I've done here and how you can go about providing power to some of your cars. Okay, so what I have here on the bottom of these trucks uh, are these H-shaped stainless steel wipers, okay? And I got these, I'm not sure, I, I, I got some from Richmond Controls at one time, and I also purchased some from Streamline Backshop. Now I've already looked, Streamline Backshop is out of stock on everything that they previously used to carry. And I don't know if he's going to get those in stock again. I'll check with him and see. But I, I'm really wondering because, you know, they have to run a lot of these uh, frets of, of, of etched metal parts at a time in order to make them cost effective. So it's a big investment for him to produce a lot of these. And if there isn't a lot of demand right now, uh, it might not be economically uh, feasible, for, feasible for him to continue stocking these. And I suspect that's what's going on. But you might check with Richmond Controls. I know he has them on his website, but whether or not he has them in stock, I don't know. Uh, so that's a real problem. But let me go ahead and, and give you an idea of how these work. Okay, so here's a truck, and this is the underside of the truck. And I just have a metal uh, screw going up through the uh, hole in the bottom of this, uh, or in the middle of this uh, power pickup. And then it just runs up into the car and is held in place, you know, with a nut inside. And what you can do is uh, attach a wire somehow to this uh, nut or to this uh, screw. and. Uh, that will give you uh, power from one side of the uh, rails. And the, the problem with these, and that's one of the problems with this type of approach, is that uh, it picks up from uh, the rails or from the axles here. And so you have to have uh, wheels that only pick up from one side or that uh, only convey power to the axle from one side. So typically when you buy replacement wheel sets, you'll get them that uh, are insulated on one wheel and not insulated on the other wheel. And what that means is then that uh, one side will be electrically connected to the axle. And so this set of wipers here would be picking up from, say, these two wheels on this side of the truck only, and only from that uh, uh, rail. And this other one, although the wheels might be picking up power, uh, they are not connected to, they're insulated from the axle here, and therefore you don't get a short across them, okay? And you have to do the same thing for the other truck. So you'll have one truck picking up power from one side and another truck picking up power from the other side. Now, in H, you know, with DC power, 
that is a problem because you might not get very reliable pickup all the time. With a stay alive circuit like I've shown you how to build, it doesn't matter that much because intermittent power is not going to be a problem, just as long as it's enough for that capacitor to stay charged. So let me show you the underside of this caboose. So on this one, I'm picking up from say this side, or this rail here on this truck, and this rail on this truck. Okay, and then power goes through the uh, metal screws up into the body of the caboose where I have wires picking up the uh, current and carrying it to the lighting circuit. So let me go ahead and pull that apart and I'll show you uh, how that works. Um, pop this open real quick. Okay. Okay. So right here is how I laid this circuit out so that it would fit easily within this car. So let me zoom in just a little bit again. Not a lot. Okay. Now, you can see what I've done is I've changed the, uh, the I've changed the layout just a little bit so that it's much, much more uh, horizontally oriented so that it will fit within the uh, car itself. And that's all I've done. And, you know, so I've got my uh, inrush current uh, resistor here going into one leg of the bridge rectifier and another one coming from this truck into the bridge rectifier. And then I have my output here going to the negative uh, uh, feed on that uh, light strip. And then I have this here coming out on the positive feed. And I can control the power as I showed you previously. So let me put this on the track and we'll power it up and give you an idea. So you can see it's, it's well lit inside of here. Okay. And what I've done here is, if you look here on the uh, windows, they have that frosted look. What I have used is this wind, uh, Woodland Scenics light diffusing uh, window film. And this is part of their just plug system. And what you do is you can, you can put this stuff on the inside of windows and it diffuses the light and uh, it also hides the fact that the inside of the building is, uh, is empty and the same thing for the caboose. So it's also going to hide the fact that there is an electrical circuit inside. And this is what the film looks like here, a little strip of it. So it's, you know, I guess it's plastic and it's got this diffusing uh, translucent uh, coating on it. So it does a very nice job of spreading out the light and it gives the appearance that somebody's home in there without uh, creating, um, without allowing you to see all of the various electrical electrical components that make up this circuit. Now, I, I told you that the uh, uh, power is, is uh, conducted up from the uh, truck through the screw here, through the uh, little metal screw that comes up through the bottom of the uh, caboose. And you can see here, uh, let me zoom in again and maybe we can get that in the video. There we go. On this side here, I've just taken a piece of scrap brass left over from a, a, an etched brass fret of, fret of parts. And I just, you know, drilled a small hole through it and used it essentially and screwed it down over the top of this, uh, where this screw comes up through the bottom of the truck. And then I soldered one of the wires uh, directly to that. On the other end, just to give you an idea of what else you could try, this is one of the springs from a KD coupler. So I've just taken that and it had a hole in it already and I just put it over top of that screw that came up through the floor and put a little nut on it and tightened it down and soldered right to it. So I'm getting fairly good pickup. So you can see here that as I move this up and down on the track, I'm not getting any disruption or flickering in the light at all. It keeps falling off. Um, and that's what we want to see. We don't want any uh, disruption in the uh, in the stay alive lighting. Okay, so that's how well that works. Now let me go ahead. I'm going to put it back on top, and you know, so you can see that you can just build this uh, circuit to fit whatever you need. And like I said before, in one of my answers to comments, you could string this out and uh, connect it with uh, insulated pieces of wire. You could attach it to the roof of the uh, of the caboose or the uh, passenger car that you're putting it in, and that would take care of hiding it even more. 
Uh, so there's a lot of things, and you're only limited by your imagination and innovation as far as putting this together. So I'm going to put this back on here and uh, pop it back in. And you can see from the side where I don't have the diffuser film on the windows what that looks like. Let me move some of this stuff out of the way. And I'll pop this up at an angle. And you can see inside the caboose there uh, as I move it around. No flickering at all. And it fits in there quite easily. And if we turn it around so that you can see the diffuse side, uh, it does a very nice job of lighting up the uh, lighting up the car and lighting up the windows. And, and now you can't see any hint of the wiring inside. So that's that's the way to do it as far as I'm concerned. Now, what about this situation that we have where, you know, there's no pickups available that I've been able to find, and other people have mentioned that as well. And, you know, one thing you can do is look around and see if you can find uh, some shim brass or, sh or sheet metal of any kind that's very thin, okay? You might check your hobby shop, check the KNS metal uh, display at, at uh, your local hobby shop, and see if you can find anything that's very thin uh, shim stock uh, sheet metal. And they used to sell packages of this stuff uh, uh, at hobby shops, and they might still. I haven't looked in a long time for it because I've been able to purchase these previously. Uh, but what, what I want to show you now, though, is a slightly different uh, option. Now, this here, if I can pick it up, is a piece of, of spring steel wire. And this is the wire that comes with uh, every tortoise switch machine. And it's a 0.024 inch diameter spring steel. But, you know, you don't want to disable your tortoise switch machines. So what I've got here is, and you can see... This is uh, something I got at the hobby shop, you know, it's your K&S Precision Metals um, piano wire. Okay, so it's a nice spring steel wire. And uh, this one here, I believe, this is number 501, and it's 0.032 inches in diameter. Um, so you can uh, purchase that, uh, and just about every hobby shop that I've been in has one of these K&S Precision Metals displays, you know. It's a vertical metal rack with a bunch of uh, red cardboard tubes just full of all kinds of pieces of metal like this. So what you want to do in order to make your own uh, spring uh, contacts is take a piece of this uh, spring wire like this, and this is the uh, 0.024, uh, but you can use smaller uh, diameter wire, and uh, that actually might give you a little bit better flexibility uh, without giving you a lot of pressure on your uh, your truck axles. But at any rate, just take that wire and bend it around a small diameter screwdriver, like this one here that I have. Okay, so that will give you a nice little spring that you'll be able to uh, place on your truck and it can rub against the uh, axles and pick up power. Okay, so what I've done is I've created a tight enough bend in this loop of wire so that it will not slip over the head of the screw. Okay, and then it's just going to sit there and it's going to rub against the axles and it's going to pick up the power from the, uh, that the wheels are transmitting to the axle. Okay, and it's going to come from one side, so you have to do this on both trucks, okay? And you have to make sure that your wheels on one side of the truck are insulated and the other are not. And the reverse of that on the other truck, so that you're not getting a short across your, uh, across your rails, okay? And then, just like I showed you in that uh, caboose, um, it's going to pick up power and transmit it up into the car where you can add a, uh, a contact uh, of your own making at that point. There's a number of different ways that you could do that. I showed you a couple of ways using brass uh, stock or, or, or the uh, KD uh, coupler spring thing. So, you know, it's a fairly straightforward uh, way of doing this and you can vary. This is a 0.024 inch uh, steel wire. You can get thinner versions of this, thinner pieces of wire. And um, that way, there won't be as much tension uh, pressing down on the axles, and it won't be as difficult to adjust them initially. But that's pretty straightforward, all there is to it, as far as coming up with your own uh, designs. 
Now, if you want to try building your own, you know, you might try looking for uh, shim stock, very thin metal uh, sheets that you can find possibly at hobby shops. And I'll look around and see if I can find anything online, but I'm not all that hopeful. This stuff is, you know, it's getting harder to find these kind of materials uh, for hobbyists. But at any rate, uh, you can build your own, uh, just cut these out uh, using uh, clippers and um, or metal shears whatever you have available heavy scissors and you know drill a hole for your screw and pop them in there but one thing to be aware of use stainless steel this is made out of stainless steel and you can also uh, possibly use what's called spring brass because regular brass won't work it will not retain its springiness it will bend and stay bent and it's not going to maintain a good physical and electrical contact for you so, you know, that's the way you have to go about doing that. Uh, you might be able to find phosphor bronze, which is springy. Okay, so stainless steel, spring brass, or springy bronze are, are the three options you have. Or you can go with, you know, the uh, K&S precision metals wire that you can purchase at your hobby shop. And then just bend a simple uh, pickup spring to go on your trucks. Well, I hope that uh, addresses some of your questions about, you know, what kind of cars do these circuits fit in and how you can provide power to them. For now then, that's it. Have a good week and we'll see you on Friday with another video. Bye now.